for those who are not able to be here, Father God, we ask that you would keep them safe, Lord God, whether they may be healing in their bodies, Father God, or they may be resting, Father God, we ask that you give them that rest and that peace, Father God, and that relaxation, Lord. But we ask, Father God, that you would come and be in this place, Father God. We thank you, Father, for the anointing, Lord God. Father, allow me to decrease so that you may increase, Lord God. Touch the hearts of your saints, Father God, so that they may be able to receive, Father God, and apply, Father, what you have for them on this day, Lord God. And we will be capable to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 4, and I always like to read from the message version. Um, I'll actually read from the New King James Version first, and then I'll go to the message version. Chapter 4, verses 6 through 16. says, if you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself towards godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but, godly, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that is now and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance. For to this end, we both labor, labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially those who believe. These things command and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but be an example to the believers in the word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is within you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things, give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and to those who hear. Before I continue, I'd like to give honor to my pastor, Pastor Lord, Pastor Marisol, and I know Pastor Rudolph, thank God, is finally on vacation. Yeah, and yeah. Rest and relaxation that she deserves. Um, so we're in Timothy, and I would like to go to the message version because for me it's always, it breaks it down a little bit more. Um, it says, you have been raised on the message of faith and have followed sound teaching. Now pass on this counsel to the followers of Jesus there. You'll be a good servant of Jesus. Stay clear of silly stories that get dressed up as religion. Exercise daily in God. No spiritual flabbiness, please. Workouts in the gymnasium are useful, but a disciplined life in God is far more so making you fit both today and forever. You can count on this. Take it to heart. This is why we've thrown ourselves in this venture so totally. We're banking on the living God, Savior of all men and women, especially believers. Get the word out. Teach all these things, and don't let anyone put you down because you're young. Teach believers with your life, by word, by demeanor, by love, by faith, by integrity. Stay at your post reading scripture, giving counsel, teaching. And that gift of ministry you were given when the leaders of the church laid hands on you and prayed, keep that dusted off and in use. Cultivate these things. Immerse yourself in them. The people will all see you mature right before their eyes. Keep a firm grasp on, your, on both your character and your teaching. Don't be diverted. Just keep at it. Both you and those who hear you will experience salvation. 
now, I just want to give a little background on Timothy. Timothy was a young minister uh, who followed in the steps of the Apostle Paul, who was like his spiritual father. So 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy are letters that Paul wrote to him, giving him advice on how to lead the church in Ephesus. Being a young minister, Tim was faced, Tim, I'm sure, <laughs> Timothy was faced, <laughs> like I know him, Timothy was faced with many challenges. Paul gave him step-by-step -step instructions, and in doing so instructs us just the same. All right. When we read the Bible, we can definitely read from it because it is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So the Bible speaks of these acts as discipleship. We know that Jesus had disciples. He taught them, and they followed in his footsteps, similar to Paul and Timothy, who was a young minister and you know, when you're young, how can you get to where you are except when you follow someone? Amen. You know, how can you get from one step to the next in leadership unless you follow someone? So, you know, you hear this, the title of this message is called Being a Follower. All right now. Um, and when you hear that, normally is that a good thing? You know, when you hear it in school, when you hear it growing up, don't be a follower. Don't be a follower. Um, you know, growing up it was, you know, well, if Johnny jumped off the bridge, would you jump off the bridge behind him? You know, when you go to explain something to your parents that you might have done, and they're like, why did you do that? Well, so-and-so did it. Well, so-and-so did it, or they said it, so it must sound real good. Or if you ever watch cartoons, I'm big on cartoons. So if you ever watch cartoons, the old school cartoons, but funny, you know, when they have the string, and they have a dollar in this bait. Oh, well, they have the commercial out, too, where you have to be quicker than that. So they have the string out, and you see something, and what do you start doing? Follow something shiny. What do you do? You follow it. Down at the bottom of the ocean, you see something shiny. Well, if you're brave enough, what do you do? You want to go after it, because it might be what? Money, gold, treasure. Right. And you want it, so you go after it. But being... <laughs> But being a follower is not a bad thing, but it depends on who or what you're following. So Timothy was following after the teachings of Paul. And Paul was giving him instructions on how to lead, on how to be a leader. Here are the things, here are the step-by-step -step instructions for what to do and how to lead. Who should be a leader, what they should do, how they should conduct themselves. Here's what you do. Here's how you conduct yourself. For us, it's the same thing. Here are step-by-step -step instructions on how to follow. Yes. If you don't know how to follow, pick this up. Yes. All the instructions yes. are there. Yes. So, you know, parents to their children or sometimes in school, um, what I did teach, you know, when a student did something and I would ask them, you know, why did you do that? Well, you know, they did it and they did it. You're teaching them to follow, but you're teaching them how to follow in the right way. Mm -hmm. What to do and what not to do. Mm -hmm. So in our faith, we follow in someone's footsteps. Mm -hmm. Same as in the Bible. You know, none of us was the first to walk the trail. And, you know, some might think that they know it all, that they wrote the book, that they have it all together. But we're not the first ones to walk the trail. Mm -hmm. Who do we follow? We follow our spiritual leaders. Who are they following? They're following Christ. Ultimately, we are followers of Christ. And if we claim to be a believer, then we are following Christ. But if you're not following your spiritual leader and the instruction of your spiritual leader, and I'm talking about from apostle to Pastor Rudolph, to Pastor Malloy, to Pastor Marisol, to the elders in the church who may bring the word forth, if we're not following that, then who or what are you following? Uh -huh. And that's my first question. You know, I just want to, and I'm not going to be before you long. That's more of a reminder to me because I know I'm long-winded. But who are you following? Who are you following? And when you get to where you're going, will it be what you intended? Yeah. And the second question is more of something to think about in the future. You know, when you get to a certain point, and we all go, the Bible says, from glory to glory, so we're all still trying to get to that next step and that next level. But when you get there, when it's your time to go, will it be where you intended to go? All right. Or where you led astray? Mm -hmm. So again, in our faith, we follow in someone's footsteps. 
So we're following the footsteps of our leaders. We're getting sound teaching. That's what it says in verse 6. You've been raised on the message of faith. This is what Paul is saying to Timothy. And have followed sound teaching. Sound teaching. Valid teaching. Reasonable teaching. Teaching to where you can go and find the proof. Right back here in the Bible. So you have to think about that. You know, these stories that are in the message, it says silly stories dressed up as religion. You know, it might sound good, but what happens if you test it out? That's right. You know, in the higher education, um, a lot of my professors encourage us to be critical thinkers. One of my professors, he said, don't take everything I say. Don't take my word for it. Question it. Mm -hmm. See, but when you're talking about the Bible, yeah. and you want to question what's coming across in the pulpit, it can take you in this house right back to the Word. Yes. It can take you right back to that sound teaching. So you want to make sure that whatever message you're getting, and sometimes, you know, we visit other churches, and, you know, definitely our leaders are saying, be sober-minded, be alert. You know, everything that glitters ain't gold. That's you know, right. everything that comes across, you want to be able to bring that right back and understand that you're getting sound teaching mm -hmm. so that you're not unintentionally led astray. Yeah. All right. yeah. So don't get mixed up in false teaching. You know, and, and, and it says, don't let anyone look down at you because you're young. It doesn't mean that you can't have a word. It doesn't mean that you can't witness to somebody, you can't bring a word to someone, but especially being young, it's like, ooh, they're young, they're naive. Let me get them. Let me pull them in. Let me feed them with all this nonsense, with all this garbage, and then see where they're going. You know, but their intention was never to follow for you to follow in the right way. Their intention was to throw you off. Mm -hmm. And if you're not getting, if you're not understanding sound teaching and knowing how to go and trace that back, then you are easily swayed. You are easily led astray. It takes about one or two conversations, and then they have you in, and then it goes from there. So, verse eight says, verse seven. B and 8 says, exercise daily in God. How many people go to the gym? No one? No one goes to the gym? Well, I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not a, when you When you feel like it. Personally, I don't like the gym. I, I prefer to dance or run at a track. I don't know. I don't know how you feel, Pastor Lord, but I feel like being a, a runner, I can't run on a treadmill. Yeah, I just go nowhere. So I just feel like I prefer to run on a track. I'm, I'm actually doing something, getting somewhere. But it says, exercise daily in God. If you've gone to the gym before and you see someone and you're going, so let's say you're going consistently. You see someone that's in there every single day, picking things up and putting things down. You know, what do they look like? They look physically fit, right? They look physically fit. Man, they must be in here every day, one or two hours in the day. Physically fit. They exercise daily, physically. But what does it mean to exercise daily in God? Yeah. See, because you can be physically fit, All right. but you can be spiritually sick. Mm -hmm. You can be spiritually unhealthy. All right. Oh, look at them. They look like they got it all together. <laughs> but on the inside, <laughs> there's disease. On the inside, mm -hmm. there's illness. On the inside, things are decaying. And if you get a, 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 a mental image of that, you know, think about what somebody might look like on the outside, decaying or diseased or ill, think about that in terms of your spirit. So how do you exercise daily in God? This is the kind of fitness that will really sustain you. Uh -huh. You know, you can get off track and then you can say, all right, I'm gonna start back again. All right, get off track and I'm gonna start back again. You know, same thing in the work. Because last week, Pastor Rudolph spoke on repentance. And we come back to God, and we get back on it, and we start all over again. We want to get back, get back on track. God is merciful in that way. So we think about being spiritually fit. How do you do that? How, how do we do that? How, how do we stay spiritually fit? Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. What else? Praying. What else? Fellowship. What else? Fasting, yes, what else? Work the word. Say again? Work the word. Work the word. Work the word. That's exercise. Work the word. I like that one. Being in the house of God. Praise and worship. Sweet communion. Fellowship with God. Being on your knees. That's how you stay spiritually fit. 
when you're spiritually fit, then you're less likely to be swayed by those false stories, by those false teachings, by those silly stories dressed up as religion when you're spiritually fit. Somebody tells you something, you're like, hold on, that don't sound right. Or somebody comes up to you and tries to bring you a word, you know, life, thank you, God bless you. But then, you know, you have to filter it out. You have to filter it out. Everybody, everything that everyone says to you, you know, even if they're not intentionally trying to throw you off, you just have to make sure that it's valid. You have Amen. to make sure that it's sound teaching. Amen. So in today's society, we're talking about following. It's all about following. Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram. It's all about following. Your popularity depends on what? The number of followers, the number of likes. It's all about following. So if we're talking about being a follower, who are you following? What are you following? Evaluate the people that you're following. You know, it's there. Social media is there. It is what it is. It can be a help, it can be a hindrance. Amen. More of a hindrance than a help if you're not careful, if you're not spiritually fit. Evaluate the people that you follow. When you think about it, on all those social media platforms, the people that you follow and your friends in school, people at work. Who are you following? If you were to sit there and really evaluate that, are they adding to your life? Are they building you up? Edifying you? Are they benefiting you? Where are they leading you to? I was watching earlier this week, I love Project Runway, um, and so when it went off, another show is like a show about models and their parents were former supermodels and the children were talking about the difference between then and now. They're saying they go to a job and it's not about your resume being built up on what you've done, it's how many followers you have. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just that easy. Oh, well, we want to see how many followers you have. And then the mom was saying, no, anybody can take a selfie. But where's the work? Where's the work that you've done? So they were talking about the difference between then and now. It's just so easy to gain a following. So when you think about that, evaluate that. My next question, what kind of trail are you leaving? You think about the people that you follow, but what kind of trail are you leaving? Because you have followers. Whether it be on social media, whether it be the generation below you, whether it be the generation above you, you have followers. Our lives are supposed to be an example. We're supposed to be followers after Christ, so we're walking in his image, so our life is the example. What kind of trail are you leaving? So in verse 11 through 14, it says, get the word out. Teach all these things, and don't let anyone put you down because you're young. Teach believers with your life, by word, by demeanor, the way you act, the way you carry yourself. By love, by faith, by integrity. Stay at your post reading scripture, giving counsel, teaching. And that special gift of ministry that you were given when the leaders of the church laid hands on you and prayed, keep that dusted off and in use. So we're supposed to be exercising our spiritual gifts. That's another way to stay spiritually fit. So teaching with your life, letting your life be the example. You might say, well, what do I have to offer? I'm only so-and-so age. What do I have to give? I come from this and that background. I can't offer anything to anybody. Well, the word says, Psalms 8 and 2, through the praise of children and infants, and again, this is the message version, through the praise and infants of chil and children, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. Also, it says in Philippians 4.13, I can do what? All all I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So think about it. What do I have to offer? Well, you can do all things. Can you do them on your own? No. Who do you do them through? Through Christ who strengthens. If you're following after Christ, he's giving you that strength. He's giving you that strength to go forward. Things that you might be fearful of. Or you might feel like, you know, I'm not confident enough to be a leader. I'm not confident enough because whether you think about it, whether you choose to accept it, then I know a lot of athletes, the discussion sometimes and the conflict is, well, I'm not a role model. 
you know, I'm not a role model. They want to take that title off, that responsibility off them. You are. Whether you accept the title or not, somebody's looking at your life. Whether they're the same age as you, whether they're older than you, whether they're younger than you, somebody's looking at your life. So think about it when you think about the people that you're following, how they're benefiting you, how they're pulling you up, and when you think about the people that, you, that, that are following after you, what kind of trail are you leaving for them? Are you keeping them on a good path, or are you leading them astray because they're following after you? It's so easy to get that off of social media, whether that's really your life or whether it's not. Yeah. But whatever they see is whatever they're following. So if you think about everything that's up there, all the content that you put up there, the message that you put out there, the language that you put out there, how you conduct yourself and what you're putting out there, that's what people are seeing. So whether that's the real you or not the real you, that's what they're following after. Amen. So I want to go to 2 Timothy. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 through 21. And then 22 through 26. And I'm almost finished. And I'll read in the message version. It says, In a well-furnished kitchen, there are not only crystal goblets and silver platters, but waste cans and compost buckets, some containers used to serve fine meals and others to take out the garbage. Become the kind of container that God can use to present any and every kind of gift to his guests for their blessings. Last week we danced to the Corinthian song, and in it, Micah Sankey was saying, I'm a vessel full of power with a treasure from the Lord. It says, become the kind of container, vessel, you know, that's what a vessel is, used to hold something. Become the kind of container that God can use. How can he use you if what's inside is full of garbage? Mm. How can he use you and how can you influence others so what you're, what you're, the message that you're sending, the follow, the trail that you're leaving is a trail of garbage. And anyone who picks that up and comes after that, that's exactly the track that they're on. That's the path that they're on. A path of garbage, depending on whatever it is that you leave. So this is just a reminder to evaluate that. Evaluate the way you live your life. It might not seem like a big deal. You know, what I'm doing, oh, it's not a big deal. Well, it is. Because somebody's looking at it. Somebody's following after it. And you might think, oh, one thing here, one thing there. Somebody picked that up. And they're like, oh, that looks good. Oh, I think I might, I, I want to do that. Somebody who may not be, who may be new, who may be a believer, who may be a friend, and they're looking at you like, oh, she looks like a good role model. You know, I want to, even if they don't come up to you and say, I'm going to follow everything that you do. You know, you might notice that you have people who cling to you and follow everything that you do. And so, yes, we have our own lives, but at the same time, it just makes you be more careful about the life that you're living. So, 22 through 26 says, run away from infantile indulgence. Run after mature righteousness, faith, love, peace, joining those who are honest in serious prayer before God. Refuse to get involved in a name discussion. They always end up in fights. God's servant must not be argumentative, but a gentle listener and a teacher who keeps cool, working firmly but patiently with those who refuse to obey. You never know how or when God might sober them up with a change of heart and a turning to the truth, enabling them to escape the devil's trap when they are caught in hell captive, forced to run his errands. My mom and my brother and I were talking, having a conversation yesterday. Um, and we were actually talking about something similar to this. And when I started to read it, when I started to study, I'm like, wow, this is, this is, this is exactly what we were talking about, that confirmation. He's telling, Paul is telling Timothy how to conduct himself, what to do, instructions on what to do. So we're talking about being a vessel. We're talking about the trail that you're leaving. So it says, God's servant must not be argumentative. There will be times when you're having a conversation with somebody or, and it can be a teacher, 
and I know with the youth um, a couple weeks ago, they, they went in, oh, well, this teacher said this, and this teacher used to tell us this, and this teacher used to do this to us to make us get to do this and that. Sorry for all the teachers in the room. And, and, and I remember when my teacher had us do this, and they did that, and it wasn't right. And, you know, they did, and they would not let go. It was, like, traumatized. And, and they all brought up their stories on and, and remembered how their teacher did this and said that and, you know, how they would go back and forth with them. Um, in college, it was welcome. You know, those discussions, you can, you can challenge your professors. You know, challenge them on things that you were like, well, I don't really understand how this is that. Or, well, I don't really think, you know, sometimes, it, you know, can go back and forth. Sometimes you can agree to disagree, but when you're talking about believers, when you're talking about the youth in the house, and when you're talking about being amongst each other, must not be argumentative. You know, people will say things that you may not always agree with, or they may be coming from a different place. Maybe they're going through things, and things that they say may not come off in the right way, but having a discussion rather than being argumentative. Being a gentle listener and a teacher who keeps cool. And we're talking about, you know, there may be some who, it says, for those who refuse to obey. And we were talking about, you know, there may be some who maybe are having challenges with the sound teacher. You know, or maybe we're thrown off track. But what you want to do is you want to listen. You want to keep a cool head. Why? Because God might change their heart. Amen. God might lead them back. Mm -hmm. But if you target them or you attack them, then they might not come back. Yeah. And that might be the soul that you were assigned to, and they're gone. Because we're all assigned to be a witness. There are souls that are assigned to us that we are to witness to, people that we are to lead and to guide, whether it's verbally or whether it's with our life as the example. So, in closing, in closing, I think I beat myself in my time. In closing, in our faith, we leave footprints to guide others. As I said, whether it's a child, you know, someone younger than you, whether it's a friend, or whether it's a new believer. You know, it's not, I'm in this walk with God, it's every man for himself. You don't understand that scripture? Too bad. Or, you know, look it up on your own time. You know, it's not every man for himself. We're all supposed to be walking in the footprints of our leaders. We're all supposed to leave footprints to guide others. We're held accountable, as I said, for all that we've been taught. All the journals that I have from when I was young enough to have to bring a journal to church to take notes from apostle teaching to any guest speaker that we had to pass in the Lord to pass it up to bed. Every single speaker, all the notes that I have, anything that you get, you're going to have to be accountable for just like in school. Whatever information comes through, you don't have to take notes if you don't want to. Hopefully you can retain it by memory because when the test comes, how are you gonna pass it? What are you gonna to use to study? You know, some might be good. Oh, I don't have to take notes. I can just remember it all. That was me up until a certain point. Then it was like, no, I need to write this down. You know, the content gets more difficult. The Bible says we go from glory to glory. New levels, new devils. So the higher you go, the more you are gonna be held accountable for because to whom much is given much is required so what are you doing with the information that's being given to you evaluate that evaluate the people that you're following might be time to unfollow might be time to delete to get rid of you want to Bible says guard your heart you want to protect what's coming in so that you're sure that what's coming out is not garbage all right now so make an effort to be mindful of who you're following, what kind of trail you're leaving, and lastly, if someone is following in your footsteps, will they arrive at the right place? Think about that. Will they arrive at the right place? Will they end up where they're supposed to be by following in your footsteps? This is just a reminder for all of us just to keep ourselves alert and sober and mindful of the lives that we live and the things that we do on a daily basis mm. that we might feel like, oh, I didn't even realize that. Oh, I didn't even realize, oh man. 
You know, and again, Pastor Rick talked about repentance. Oh, Lord. You know, it, it doesn't mean, oh, man, my life was horrible. Everybody who followed in my footsteps, they're all led astray. You know, it doesn't mean you can't turn it around. Sometimes people might have a hard time seeing, well, I remember you used to be this way. And they just can't look at you any differently. But we can all change. Yes, we, can. we can all come to repentance. We can all change our lives yes. around. Yes. And even if you weren't living the worst life, but you know that there's something that you were doing or a way that you were going, and it's like, you know what? I want to drop that bad habit. You know what? I want to drop the way I was doing that. I want to drop, I want to change the way I speak to people. I want to change my attitude on a daily basis. You know, all those things, and then somebody might look at you like, wow, I can change too. I used to live my life one way, but now I can change. They changed. You know, you think about, you know, those who may be, as I said, those who may be, you know, incarcerated, those who may be in jail, and you think about, man, you know, I don't think they should ever get out because they did A, B, and C, and it was just the most horrible thing, but the Bible says sin is sin. Sin is sin. There's no sin that's greater than the other. So if we can change a minor thing around, remember, God is bigger. Yes. He's bigger than the yes. universe. Yes. He's bigger than any problem we face. He's bigger than anything that we have done. Yes. So why can't we come back to him and change that around? So as I say, just a reminder to be, be a follower. But follow after the right thing. Amen. Follow after the right people. Because in order to be a leader, you have to first what? Follow. And even as a leader, you still have to follow. It doesn't stop. It doesn't end. You're still learning. You're still changing your ways because we're trying to get to perfection. We're trying to walk in His image. So it's not too late. I know we're all young in spirit. But it's not too late. And if you are young, that's something to think about. You know, everybody's getting ready to go back to school. Educators are going back to work. And you think about being in school. Let the, be mindful of that. Yes. Who are you following after? Who are the people that is in your circle? Who are the people that you go to for advice? Where are they leading you? What are they telling you? Is it sound advice? Is it valid? Is it going to keep you on the right path or get you back on the right track? And think about that for the trail that we're leaving. Um, you know, when we when we die and we have a tombstone, you know, now we might think about well, what would be on it. You know, what would be the in between? What would people say? about me, about the life that I'm leaving, about my legacy. What would they have to say about me? How many people did I positively influence? Because each day that we're here is an act of service. What are we doing? What, what are we, it says, keep those gifts dusted off. So you may not you know, be in ministry every single time. You may not do something every single time you come to the house of God. Doesn't mean you can't at home. And when you are doing them, doing them in excellence. Why? Because you're leaving footsteps for the next person. So I hope that this encouraged someone as it encouraged me. And I'm going to do it.